The mission accomplished scenario in Labyrinth certainly gives the US a tough situation to start. Can I beat the AI in this situation? Tune in to find out here today on Legendary Tactics. Now the mission accomplished uh, question mark uh, scenario is one that I actually haven't played a lot of and uh, it's kind of interesting because it, it definitely feels like you join the game in midstream and uh, so it's a, a, a bit of a of a, of a strange uh, situation if you're used to playing let's roll or you can call me Al um, because you're you're trapped in uh, in a couple of uh, regime changes right off the hop uh, you are uh, dealing with a lot of sort of stuff um, potentially with uh, uh, you know the world completely against you uh, in the global war on uh, on terror and with your prestige really low so it's a kind of uh, I don't know if it's I, I assume it's pretty balanced in in many ways um, I haven't tried this uh, as the jihadist player uh, so I'm not sure exactly how this uh, uh, scenario will go. I'll have to maybe give it a try uh, at some point soon. Um, but as the U.S., uh, there's certainly um, a lot to overcome early on. And uh, so as a general rule, um, whenever I have played this scenario, I like to uh, do a, a, a reassessment and a withdrawal out of both, uh, well, certainly Iraq anyway, if not uh, um, Afghanistan as well. Um, for a couple reasons. Number one, don't want to get stuck in regime change, want to get the troops back home. Um, also, uh, the other reason would be that uh, if your prestige is really low, it's never a bad idea to just, uh, if you can have give a pre prestige role, it may not benefit you, but when your prestige is two, hey, if you get a bounce and you can get your prestige up a couple, you know, two, three, uh, Points, that's not a bad spot to uh, it's really not a bad thing to to have happen and you have a, a shot at at least uh, recovering some prestige um, and then once the um, once you're you've reassessed and you've withdrawn and uh, presumably the world is more on your side you can get to work on rebuilding your prestige and uh, but anyway this this particular game game didn't afford me that option early on I really did not have uh, uh, many great cards I didn't have the the right cards I needed to reassess so I kind of had to improvise a bit and uh, you know once again building up my prestige is the is the top priority um, and uh, unfortunately um, you know I've got uh, uh, the uh, the enemy working against me here um, now, Clean Operatives is, of course, a great uh, card. It's one of the most powerful uh, events in the G uh, Jihadist events uh, because it allows essentially free passage to the U.S. And uh, so I, even though there was um, very little kind of risk here, I, I really wanted to get rid of those uh, cells in the U.S. And at, being hard on terror is actually a a good thing in this case uh, because uh, um, I can disrupt two cells in one go so I'm gonna disrupt the one time and see if we can get uh, get rid of them entirely um, but this this was a, a bit of a tough uh, choice here uh, because I really didn't have that that many great events you know cards to work with um, at least the world is on my side. It, it's just a matter of repairing my prestige uh, at the moment. Um, but I'm just going to get rid of the uh, <laughs> get rid of those cells out of uh, out of the U.S. there and make sure we're um, doing okay on that front. And uh, you have to forgive the the slow animations here, um, but it does give me a bit of time to do a, a bit of a play by play. Now, again, I am in overstretch, so I'm only going to get seven cards. Uh, now, at least the uh, my opponent is in, uh, um, well, moderate funding, but potentially in uh, tight funding. Um, and uh, uh, you can see what, the, what they're up to, it basically, is doing some, uh, um, some jihads around trying to worsen governance, and I don't blame them. 
Um, so, you know, we're kind of in a in a pickle in this. It, you know, it, it's one of those things. I mean, I really enjoy Labyrinth, but sometimes this game can really feel like you're clawing yourself up from uh, a, an, an abyss, if you will, a, a depth. If you look at what I've got, uh, I really don't have a lot uh, hap happening right now, at least until my prestige gets uh, into better shape. And so I'm looking at um, <clears throat> I'm looking at my events right now, Al Jazeera and Predator. There's really nothing compelling. Um, Al Jazeera, of course, is going to uh, uh, move Saudi Arabia to uh, uh, towards neutral. Well, towards neutral, towards adversary, which is never a great thing. Oh, actually, sorry, they moved Iraq as it as it happened. But I need the ops. I've got to uh, I've got to use them. And uh, my kind of best idea was uh, something along the lines of a war of ideas in. Uh, Maybe Pakistan, even though it's at a negative one. Um, you know, I just uh, I, I wanted to try and repair it. I needed a great roll, but I just didn't really have much uh, going on. Perhaps I could have disrupted uh, in Iraq, I guess, instead. Uh, but when your prestige is at one, it's just it feels like you've got such a mountain to climb. Um, at least we got fair governance in uh, Central Asia. And then uh, the back channel uh, here uh, is used for uh, um, some uh, <laughs> some traveling around, and you can see what they're what is is building there is building up some uh, some cells in Saudi Arabia to uh, <coughs> make some sort of a of a of a you know regime change there, and because uh, there's just too many troops in Iraq and Afghanistan to really uh, get the cells uh, in place. Now, on the plus side, uh, because um, the funding is tight for the uh, jihadists, there's really not a lot of uh, options. Uh, there's only five cells available, and uh, they'll need all five. And uh, playing uh, playing an event, I guess, will will help out get a couple more cells down. Um, this event is going to uh, put Lebanon at poor neutral. I don't know if that's much of a much of a big deal there but uh, uh anyway i'm kind of looking my hand and i do have special forces i got a couple of those which could be useful kosovo's okay um i'm also looking to get rid of the martyrdom operation um if i can do that safely that's um you know that's a good thing it will also eliminate a cell this is one of the the uh the tricks of the trade in terms of uh when you play as the american player sometimes the events uh are actually helpful and i'm sure you know for the jihadist as well but martyrdom operation is an example because if you can trigger that event when there really isn't a, a good spot for um, a plot uh, you know, if all the cells happen to be in um, poor governance countries or whatever, I mean, there's the funding boost that will come of it. But I'm I'm looking at some sort of combination here. You know, if I can use Let's Roll in combination with Martyrdom Operation, I think that that would be pretty pretty useful. So I'm gonna the, really the 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 only two threats right now are the Central Asia cell, and uh, I was also thinking the cell in Afghanistan um, might also be a problem. But I'm also worried about just uh, my opponent just recruiting in between the two, and so I'm uh, I'm going to uh, <laughs> just uh, see what I can do to kind of minimize that. Now there's there's some plots happening in Afghanistan and uh, and Saudi Arabia. Um, I guess that's just purely for funding purposes, and uh, that's fine. Um, and uh, Gitmo is played for a plot again. Um, not sure why we're plotting in India, but um, whatever, that's okay. Um, anyway, lots of uh, potential funding uh, headed their way. Now, little do they know, I happen to have Let's Roll in hand, and uh, so that's going to... Uh, uh, be very helpful because uh, they happen to plot in an ally country so that is going to allow me to um, to block the plot 
uh, there and get me an extra card, uh, which is three ops, and that is very helpful. And then uh, I, I get to uh, flip a country around. So yeah, we're in, <clears throat> you know, as far as that went, that was a great play. I'm still trying to find a way to get rid of that martyrdom operations. And uh, um, unfortunately, um, I don't think I'll have enough uh, to block all the plots that are happening this turn. Um, there's just too, uh, too many. So the funding is going to go up and is going to push into the moderate territory. There's not going to be a lot I can do about that. Um, so I'm going to disrupt the cell out of Afghanistan and, and hope that the recruiting goes on in Saudi Arabia. And uh, I can, <laughs> hopefully I can then trigger martyrdom operations and get that, uh, you know, completely out of my out of my hands. So anyway, Euro Islam uh, is uh, played for the uh, for the uh, recruiting in Saudi Arabia, which is perfect. And uh, that's what I was hoping for. Now, in a way, I'm hoping for that. <laughs> but uh, obviously, my opponent's setting up um, the uh, setting up, um, uh, you know, a, a regime change there in Saudi Arabia, or sorry, a um, move to him. Um, Islamist rule in Saudi Arabia and uh, interestingly my opponent played Iran to try and knock down Gulf states which again is a bastion of uh, it's the rock of the Middle East in, in this game um, so I use special forces to knock down Saudi Arabia peg um, just make it that little bit more difficult to um, to utilize uh, and um, I think um, using that uh, Kosovo card. I'm not exactly sure why I didn't use martyrdom there uh, because it strikes me as a good time. Um, but uh, but anyway, uh, maybe I'm holding it for uh, for this kind of thing if uh, you know to try and block Saudi Arabia from uh, having the five cells. but it looks like they're they're gonna have more than enough. And uh, so this is going to be a bit tough here. So we're going to use this and it is going to cause a couple of plots and uh, we have to hope now Saudi Arabia is not a besieged regime which is helpful um, this does send a cell back to the track but it's not really going to be enough uh, unfortunately um, I suppose um, I could use that for a disrupt um, but if none of the cells are exposed then it's not really going to matter if there was a a cell there that was exposed then that might have worked but uh, um, at any rate we're just uh, we have rebuilt our, our prestige very quietly and so we're just working on hey if we can get a couple of these uh, countries to um, you know to good then we've we can start that sort of steamroller that uh, the US depends on uh, getting the uh, you know, the, getting one state somewhere to good governance and then uh, like a domino effect, just letting that roll through. Um, now, I am also still very concerned that I'm st stuck in two regime changes, um, none of which are going anywhere fast. Um, my I'm, I'm really actually hoping for something like a, a, a turnout or a, I think it's a Sidani card or whatever. Um, the uh, you know a card that lets me automatically improve governance so I can get out of uh, out of this situation. Uh, fortunately, my opponent rules poorly. Um, now it does create a besieged regime in Saudi Arabia, so it does leave it very weak and potentially uh, ready to topple. And of course, uh, the next uh, attempt goes right to recruiting in Saudi Arabia. So. We have a little bit of a reprieve, but essentially we could be a um, couple cards away from um, Saudi Arabia being the Islamist regime here. So we need to uh, act on that. And I've been handed a bunch of events um, that are not especially useful uh, in terms of, um, in, you know, in terms of something that I can use to go to uh, go against this uh, 
this building issue in uh, Saudi Arabia, but I'm going to move some troops over. So that is uh, going to disrupt things a little bit. And I really, um, you know, I think the hijab could be a very useful event. It's, it's the only event I have that's mine. So um, I'm just wondering about that, whether it's worth taking the, uh, the ops or whether, uh, you know, the event is actually going to be useful. Um, I'm hoping now that, uh, well, hijab really would be the best use of that. I think if I did use that would be to disrupt in, uh, um, to disrupt in Saudi Arabia and get rid of a couple more cells and just, you know, cause some trouble there. So, but I may also have thought at the time that, um, it is my only three ops card, uh, the rest of them being, uh, enemy events as well. So I'm um, not super happy with, uh, with that. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, this, that could be a big problem switching Germany. Well, Germany is already soft. So France flipping to soft is not the end of the world. Um, but Schengen visas, I think is here is playable because, uh, I'm happy to send cells over to Europe where they're going to, you know, be far away from Saudi Arabia, um, and where these things are, um, but in the end, I, I opt to put IEDs uh, into the reserve and give myself some flexibility, potentially playing two, three ops cards in the next uh, in the next uh, turn. Um, now, interestingly, playing to place a cell in Israel is kind of useless, but um, whatever. Uh, there's some <laughs> some stuff going on in Somalia, but nothing really goes on there. Or sorry, I think that was in Saudi Arabia. They're trying to recruit again. So I'm going to take this opportunity with my reserve to get a disrupt in. And that, again, boosts my prestige uh, a little bit, which is great. And uh, really doesn't give uh, the... Well, to, again, it scatters the cells. So there's no advantage to the AI doing any of this. But I guess... It doesn't really hurt either <laughs> because at the moment there's only three cells on the board. I actually for a moment thought that I might be able to get away with uh, winning by eliminating all the cells off the board. But, you know, with two regime changes uh, here, there's really it's not really feasible for that to to happen. It's unfortunately it's not uh, not really plausible because uh, you have the automatic successes of Afghanistan and uh, Iraq. So, um, yeah, so you just, it wasn't really a, a feasible way that, to win. It had crossed my mind, but yeah, just not going to, not going to happen, especially with funding at moderate and all that stuff. It, well, even without it, it's, it's just not a feasible way to win. And in general, I, I mean, I have won that way, but uh, I don't think it's something where you can count on it. <laughs> so uh, I certainly wouldn't count on uh, playing that, uh, you know, winning that way. I think the, the really the, that you win that way by happenstance. You're going for winning by good governance. And that's really the only feasible way to, to get uh, uh, to get to victory in this game uh, for the U.S., and I'm um, forced to play Al Ambar. I guess I, I could have held on to it. Uh, it's, it's actually a surprisingly decent uh, event. Um, but uh, it is a bit of a mixed event. And so, well, not really, I guess. It's, uh, it's, it's one that you want to cancel if you can. Um, but it's not a game-ending one. It's just a pain, um, especially because it blocks uh, Zawahiri and all that, the U.S. use of it. So... Um, yeah, so I've, I've left myself a uh, hijab here and, uh, I'm really at this point just waiting for the first country to go good. And I've got Pakistan at fair. I've got Gulf States at fair. I've got Indonesia at fair. Um, and as long as I can sort of keep the, uh, the cells under control and, you know, uh, try and avoid, uh, a uh you know any sort of uh you know islamist regime kind of uh, set up i don't have the resources to 
uh, you know, to get out of, uh, or to get to stop them at this point, being in two regime changes. So um, I've got to do what I can to just prevent them from happening. And uh, now <clears throat> at, at this point again as well, like I'm, I'm wondering about reassessing and whether um, it's possible to win these regime changes um, when you're relying on mass turnout, which I just got, and Sistani. So that was the the name of the other card. I happen to get the probably the best possible draw for the U.S. So that means I can end um, one of the, I can end the uh, regime change in Afghanistan. And so I did get lucky here. Um, and then you have uh, you've got a bunch of of good, well, decent events. Fata is one that obviously, if I can avoid playing it, that would be ideal. Um, there's some stuff going on in Israel. Not really sure why that was a target, but whatever. Um, so now it's uh, just looking at the hand and figuring out, okay, what's going to work best here? What's the best combination? Um, but it, before some other weird card event comes forcing me to discard them, I think uh, my first move has to be uh, mass turnout and uh, Sistani. Um, it's, it's pretty clear. I'm just kind of, I know this turn, but it's thinking about what is going to happen next turn. And uh, I'm thinking because I obviously Afghanistan is going to be at, uh, at good governance. Uh, soon, I did have to just check to make sure it is a Shia mix uh, regime change country. So just double checked on that before playing it. Um, but we got to Afghanistan out of the regime change. So that gives me some really good options um, as far as that goes. Um, and in many ways, this feels like a bit of a potential turning point in the game, um, even though there's... Uh, uh, yeah, and then um, managed to get uh, a boost in prestige up to nine now. So that is, I'm really beginning to get in good shape. Now, the only problem is the world has gone soft on terror. And I am, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, I'm hard on terror at the moment. So I do need to reassess here. And uh, I just don't have the ops right now, really, unless I'm willing to use Fata, which I don't think I am. <laughs> Especially Pakistan not being at, at good governance, that's a tough call to uh, to make. So, um, but I'm thinking I got to get uh, the, the the troops back to the track at some point. Um, that's important um, so I can get an extra card next turn, and uh, and still um, if, you know give me some flexibility as far as. Um, you know what I'm able to uh, to do, but I really need to now when my, when my prestige is is in decent shape, um, I need to try and um, and do as many war of ideas as I possibly can. See now my prestige is bumped up into uh, very high, and that is at that point you just you're all you're thinking about is spamming um, wars of ideas because that's all that matters at that point. Um, although I did have to worry about Iraq all of a sudden because um, there was a bunch of uh, stuff going on. Uh, uh, Sadr's, is Al Sadr's uh, was played. And uh, so, um, yeah, I'm just, I wish I, the war of uh, ideas was more on my side. <laughs> I'm just at opposite ends here. It's only a minus one at this point, but um, yeah, it's what do you, what do you do? Um, so I'm going to, Take the event. Uh, this is another almost uh, Al Adams Azhar is almost a must play event for uh, the funding hit that it causes. Um, it is a solid, solid event. But otherwise, wars of ideas, even overspending, whatever I got to do to get Pakistan to good, and then I can work on um, Gulf states and Indonesia and maybe put this game away in uh, fairly short order. Um, now I, the, uh, my opponent plays homegrown, um, potentially lining up the States, but I do, the Patriot Act is in place. Uh, I'm going to just dump Fata. I just find Fata to be an unplayable event for the most part. Uh, it is just such a disadvantage. And if the, um, I think it's the Pakistani generals card or whatever, uh, if that card's already been and gone, 
Unless you're willing to use uh, an oil spike to get it back, I just don't see uh, why that would be a good a good idea. Um, now the election is here, um, potentially a good thing. Um, I'm fine with uh, it going either way uh, at this point. There's a couple of plots as uh, my opponent desperately tries to uh, get some income. And uh, there's going to be a couple plots placed uh, in uh, in Iraq, and that's actually well played because um, obviously um, uh, we can't play that because of the uh, um, not solder, but the other card that went down uh, blocks it, unfortunately. Um, but the uh, but anyway, it's just. Uh, the, it's going to hurt my prestige. It's it's still I'm still going to have high prestige if those plots go off. But I, I'm really kind of thinking, hmm, if I can actually play this election, if the election goes my way, and it uh, it, it stays uh, soft on terror, um, which is not really what I was hoping for, um, but um, I'm thinking I've got to do something to uh, uh, you know to to foil the the plans i ended up just saying okay you know what i'm just going to go for it uh, war of ideas and uh, i got lucky i got uh, pakistan to good so now the uh, the two plots are going to go off and uh i'm just hoping to <laughs> even if it's a minus one modifier i'm just going for it um, but unfortunately my prestige takes a, a bit of a hit and uh um, that's unfortunate uh, that my prestige is down now to uh, to seven um, it's always great when it's nice and high uh, when it's very high because you can offset a global war on terror um, negative and uh, it certainly helps out when you're getting countries to good if you have a good country neighboring and and uh, the world is on your side as far as the GWT track and you have um, very high prestige look out it's the game's going to be over very, very soon. Um, so now I'm kind of looking at what cards I can... I've got some decent ops. I, I mean, Bin Laden card is is fine um, for ops. I'm fine. I, I mean, the event's great, but um, it's I'm fine with using it to, um, for ops here. And so I'm trying to get the world to switch over. And uh, I, I did. I got the... Uh, Benelux to flip and now that puts me in a much much better spot uh, in terms of my um, wars of ideas unfortunately I miss that one um, <laughs> the most frustrating part of this game for the US is missing those die rolls because sometimes you can play four cards in a row and just miss 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 even with decent modifiers and uh, certainly aid helps uh, I, I'm glad they have that mechanic to at least make it uh you know if a near miss at least gives you some benefit but uh i don't know given my luck you know it seems to be uh, a problem now um with the funding high now i have to actually watch it because uh there's a lot of cells building up in iraq right now and i have to, i can't add any troops to that uh unfortunately uh so i have to really be careful here um, because there could be a, a big problem with a uh, with a uh, major jihad potentially happening where troops are, which is never a good never a good thing. Um, but I'm kind of pushing through. Um, Gulf states is good, and now I'm looking at Saudi Arabia, and uh, yeah, just doing what I can to basically race, uh, see if I can race to the end. Um, now I get to get another prestige boost up to 12, which is awesome. Um, but uh, Iraq is really worrying me. I need to focus on that and probably <clears throat> probably I should have. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's one of the I just figured, hey, maybe I can just essentially speed to the end here. Um, <coughs> now I've got six uh, six troops that they're actually they i believe they they have enough or sorry they're missing they're one short i think it's a little hard to count on the on the map there but i think they're one short 
on cells uh, in um, in Iraq. It was pa sorry, Pakistani offensive. That's the the can the can card that cancels Fata. Um, and uh, so they uh, play for uh, Islamist rule in Iraq, and that was where I really messed up. My prestige goes from 12 to 1, and that is brutal. That is almost borderline unforgivable. Um, now I've got a big uh, hill to climb again, and I totally underestimated their abilities there, and I should have done more to... Uh, uh, to fix that now I guess uh, on the plus side I can get my troops out and get some cards I did uh, I, I don't know what I was thinking here because I I should have put tr more troops back to the troop track even though I would have left Afghanistan open um, I think it needed to happen so I'm using the uh, Hamas elected uh, card to get troops to the troop track and I'm thinking okay I'm gonna have to do maybe a reassessment here and uh you know just get uh, get back into iraq and you know labyrinth is a is a is a bit of a marathon and sometimes uh you overlook things you get distracted you get uh you focused on the wrong things and uh, that certainly happened uh with with me in iraq in this uh in this mission it should not have been that that hard. I should have done more disrupts. It would have cost a lot of ops, but and ultimately, you know, and it may have not been actually uh, preventable. It, it it would have been something that the uh, the bot would have hammered over and over and over again. And I'm not sure. Maybe it, maybe it was too much to expect it to be um, for me to actually hold it back. Uh, so. Um, but I'm already thinking, okay, I need to, um, I need to get, uh, uh, these, uh, this, that, uh, Islamist re regime, uh, off the map. Um, as you can see, they're already attempting to travel to Pakistan. Um, again, I, I, my only complaint sometimes with the AI is that I feel that they are a little bit too long distance travel happy. Uh, they're not really into my mind. They're not, it's not a, the, a great way to get around. I know sometimes you need to do it, but, um, you end up costing yourself so many cells in the, in the attempt that it's probably not worth it. And I mean, I'm happy that the AI is trying to travel to Pakistan and probably trying to do either a plot or, or minor jihad or something like that. But I, I mean, I'm happy about that, but it's not optimal play it's much easier to just start with gulf states maybe and start chipping away you know move three cells in and and uh and then do three uh plots or three plot attempts or you know some jihad attempts or something like that it's you know to me that's better play but um but the ai has their algorithm and <laughs> it uh it does what it does um it's still sometimes a good challenge though it's funny how uh uh, you know how an uh, an unthinking flowchart can still give you a decent challenge, especially if you get focused on the wrong things as I did. So, um, so anyway, yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm looking now for through the, the discards for something with the oil spike, and the Abbas card is really like the only one that seems to be somewhat useful. But um, there's really nothing that I can utilize right now um unfortunately um so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be tricky because i've i was looking for something where it, which would allow me to reassess heck even axis of evil wouldn't be a bad <laughs> card in this um situation and i would love to make use of oil spike to get a say mass turnout or something like that but i just i gotta reassess first and it's not something which is going to be cheap and easy to do here so I do have the ops though. Um, the only problem though is that the um, the the GWOT track is against me, and that's not something that um, I needed to uh, uh, I needed to uh, to have. So um, in the, I, I played that for the uh, the event, I believe. I I must I 
I don't know where I missed that, but I didn't think Fato was in place. But uh, perhaps it. Uh, I was. I was sure I discarded that, but maybe there was something uh, when I was chit chatting that I missed. Uh, but at any rate, um, there's more recruiting going on in Iraq, and uh, it's kind of funny because the uh, my opponent here is kind of run out of uh, decent options of where to go next. Um, so uh, they're going to make me discard my highest up event which happens to be special forces not the worst uh, discard in the world i have my my uh, ops and uh, i'm just thinking with my with my prestige where it is um, i'm thinking i i just need to actually reassess i think that's uh, the best thing i can do at the moment is switch to hard we'll worry about getting the world on our side um, I don't have a random card to discard. I've got no prestige to lose. There's really no harm that can come from that event. Um, it's uh, uh, sometimes you just hit rock bottom and there's nothing, uh, nothing else you can do. <laughs> it's just uh, you're, uh, you know, the events, uh, the negative events don't even touch you anymore. You're so in such rough shape. Um, so it seems like the AI has kind of entered into a bit of a, of a, a loop uh, itself in that it's focused on getting to Afghanistan. It will get there eventually, um, but uh, I'm not too worried about that at this point. We're just uh, looking to uh, figure out a way to claw back from that uh, kind of misplay earlier uh, that uh, um, has, has been costing me. Now, um, drawing a mitt full of my opponent's events, again, not the worst thing in the world. Uh, the Kemalist Republic is actually something that works against me in this uh, situation. And uh, now you can see uh, Somalia being the kind of the likely the next uh, target. And uh, interestingly, uh, using oil spike to draw back martyrdom. Uh, I don't really see a value for martyrdom at the moment. In fact, I'm looking to use martyrdom at some point myself uh, to, uh, uh, you know, to, to uh, you know, get rid of a cell. Um, there are, you know, cards like um, Madrasas and, uh, and Opium and all that, which are not playable because there's no cells uh, available on the track. Um, my opponent is, uh, for some reason, going to do a, a, a plot in Israel. Um, well, I guess it gets rid of the cell there. But um, one of the funny things that happens when the jihadists get to full strength in this game, it's really funny because they have the same number of ops as they always have. So really, a lot of the cells end up sitting around doing nothing. And... Um, you know, you're in many ways, it's it's great for the, you know, for my opponent to have those cells on the board because it's better there than potentially on the track. But I don't think it's necessarily a massive advantage to have all 15 cells on the board. Part of it is that I know where they are. I can work around them. I can I can make my plays based on the known location of the cells, even if they're hidden. Um, I know what's. Uh, you know what's what's going on so when they're on the track they could pop up anywhere and it can be a little more uh you know disconcerting or whatever now Kashmir comes up and obviously that's uh, going to be the big attempt here it says the the power play uh they roll and miss uh, but but Pakistan is at neutral and that's never uh, a good thing um you never want uh, Pakistan to get to adversary it's uh just something that is uh it can be a problem um and the and the the real issue is i don't have any great uh <laughs> any great way of, of clawing that back to ally at the moment um i'm just uh looking to play the kind of the best of the worst here um and see if i can um i'm just looking at the odds here it's really not that great um so i'm gonna try and flip uh one of the uh, countries like uh, Thailand to my side and uh, it actually works so that gives me a prestige and it gets uh, things on the on track as far as the uh, the global war on terror uh, track um, so now I'm kind of looking Somalia is already at uh, 
at poor governance now so really martyrdom, martyrdom doesn't really have a massive effect on me the only thing that might happen though is uh, uh, you know maybe if it hap something happens in China or uh, is that in the UK or whatever then uh, that or sorry not the UK in Benelux for example then uh, it could flip it flip it or or whatever uh, or sorry I'm actually no I'm looking at it now sorry I'm with things at hard yeah there's really well I guess sorry the UK would be the the prime target I guess if that's the case uh, flipping uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, card to uh, uh, they're flipping uh, the UK to uh, soft would be a bit of a of a pain um, but and uh, looking to travel now to Somalia you can see where the next uh, the next thing is going down but now I am in uh, I'm in a bit better uh, uh, shape right now the world is on my side my prestige is still really low so I'm okay with triggering a uh, uh, a, uh, um, a prestige uh, role for me and uh, now the question is um, what do I do and we'll just uh, we'll just hang on we'll do a war of ideas in Indonesia it didn't work but uh, the odds were against me but um, anyway we get rid of a cell this essentially is the best time to play martyrdom there's really no great i i mean if it were me if i was the player I probably would have played into the uk but uh but that's fine i mean it's still um, a random thing but really it just costs a sell and doesn't give them any other benefit uh in this case so that's a perfect example of, of playing the card in a way to neuter the event now there's some recruiting going on all those uh guys attempting to get back uh, into somalia um or to build sorry the yeah i guess they're all looking to get there and uh the event um is played and i get a prestige roll now i've had some luck earlier in the game but uh, in this case it just knocks me down by one so i'm in the toilet again and uh, this is you know mentally speaking this is always the the toughest part for the u.s is trying to claw back that prestige as i said earlier um so overall um i'm uh <laughs> we're just kind of plowing through the uh uh the cards here and we're on to the second uh i believe we're on to the second deck now so uh yep deck two so um it's not often you find a game of labyrinth goes multiple decks but i actually don't mind it when it does because you oftentimes the board evolves to a state where suddenly cards that like libyan wmd which you know normally would have very little uh, use in in some of the extended games it can actually factor in because you've got enough time to develop the board in a in a in a way that goes beyond what the sort of that one deck let's roll or uh you can call me al kind of very it, it, the story it tells oftentimes is a pretty similar one uh but uh you know if you play into the th three decks suddenly places like you know kenya and so forth suddenly become of of interest um and of use so um all right so i am looking now at, uh, I've got some some pretty strong events. I want to dump ones like Quagmire and so forth. Uh, take the event first. <laughs> I was very cautious on this, and uh, then um, uh, essentially uh, look to uh, to go into uh, do a regime change. But you trigger the event first, and then that essentially neuters that uh, that event. And uh, so we're going to get in there and. Uh, do what we can to oh i think i missed mis triggered something there so i'm going to deploy and uh deploy into iraq uh with the cells now i was hoping actually to deploy from afghanistan but it unfortunately it's it has to come from the track there's a rule i did, kind of overlooked so i thought okay well we'll uh we'll use a card that of is of marginal use or interest or we can even use, uh, yeah, homegrown is fine. Get that cell into the UK where it's um, a little bit off 
the beaten track. Um, but we have to go in this turn to uh, into Iraq uh, because Somalia is about to fall, um, being a besieged regime and all. So all the troops go back to the track and just as they're settling in back home, we send them right back into action with, uh, with the deploy. And uh, hopefully we can get a prestige bump, um, which would be great. But we'll have to see how that goes. So yeah, I'm gonna just uh, put in a, a bunch of cells, basically a, one more than usual. Now nothing happens there for my prestige, but certainly didn't get worse, uh, which is fine. And uh, Spain, um, with its plot, ends up rolling uh, to uh, Italy and everyone. There's a couple of rolls, not only for, uh, for Spain, but also for uh, the other Schengen countries. And uh, so we'll just see how that all looks now. It didn't really affect anything, as it turned out. And uh, so, um, yeah, and also we have Turkey at neutral as well. Um, which shouldn't be a problem. Turkey's so far off the beaten track. I'm happy to have it at, at good. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, so that's perfect. So now we are in, in good shape. We have a lot of cells to disrupt. Uh, so we're going to use these, uh, these high ops cards to disrupt and start getting some of these cells off the, uh, off the board. And... Uh, but because of, of um, uh, Sadr or, or Al Embar, one of, one of the two, I can only disrupt one cell at a time. Now, that's not actually that bad because sometimes you disrupt so much that you run out of uh, you run out of cells to uh, uh, to disrupt because they all end up getting you know wiped out and then they move to somewhere else. And I'm not sure if you saw that, but Somalia um, just went. Uh, to Islamist regime here. So um, I'm going to need, I don't know if I really need to worry about that. It's only one resource. It's not the end of the world. It's, it is a little bit out of the way. It's only neighbored by two uh, one value countries. So just in terms of uh, the risk of, of spreading, the only thing it really acts as is a hub for uh, recruiting, uh, which in many ways Iraq already is. Uh, but I'm hoping that we'll get out of that soon enough. And uh, if we do, we've managed to keep our core of uh, with um, Pakistan and Afghanistan and Gulf states. Um, and of course, uh, there's going to be some travel to Pakistan and uh, only one of them makes it. But we've managed to keep our core and that has been tremendously useful. Now, I, I'm going to play uh, Bhutto for the event. I really think that's a strong event for the U.S. Uh, just to keep uh, things under control there. And we're just going to keep on doing some um, disrupts. I don't know why I'm hovering the card over those other options. Uh, we're going to disrupt one cell at a time, and that's fine. That gives us a, still gives us our prestige bump, and that's all we need. Um, to uh you know i don't even mind if the cells keep coming back we uh we really uh um uh, you know we're happy to have them now the problem is with plots of course they will hurt and uh, there's not much we can do about that um foreign fighters uh come charging in and uh there's going to be uh um, the uh ex kgb card to shift central asia to um to adversaries so that's uh, one that may not be coming back um i was just spending the two ups there kind of desperately thinking that uh it would not be uh <laughs> it would not it would be something that would if we could just get lucky we could uh move indonesia to ally and actually we did so that's uh that's all right this one's going to be a bit of a wash uh there's no cell to place and the, the prestige there's no cards to discard and the prestige bump uh, is uh, or sorry I guess I should have let the event uh, trigger first um, in that case um, but uh, I got a, another sell in to uh, Pakistan there um, there's a besieged regime now in Afghanistan and there's no cells to place which is great uh, but the besieged regime is a little bit worrying um, 
certainly it's not not a great situation um but overall i'm i'm feeling okay about the situation right now uh as i said i still have my core um i've still got my uh my three countries indonesia's one step away from uh going good and and getting out of this uh, regime change um is uh something that i'm looking forward to now i'm glad that the uh the app did not play musharraf for the event that's a terrible event for the uh uh for the um for the u.s especially if uh you've labored so hard to get uh, pakistan to good and then have it undone by musharraf but uh that's uh, i've had it also used to the benefit where it's uh, it's brought me back from either the brink of an Islamist rule or it's brought me out of that. So um, that, that card cuts both ways. Um, so now I'm just kind of looking. I've, I've got the, the world is neutral on terror, which I don't mind. That's a good uh, thing, I think, to, um, to have. I noticed I had the Iran card, so I'm going to play that one first before I uh, access of evil. I got that darn Fata card again. Um, so we're going to um, see what we can do here to take for the take the event and manage to get a sell out of there. I really don't uh, don't want Iraq flipping back. Uh, I went for a prestige bump. I got a prestige prestige bump of one. So I'll I'll take it, especially from um, an event uh, an enemy event. Um, essentially that benefit it benefited me it just gave me a, a prestige and I can now use the ops to do a disrupt and to um, at least affect one cell uh, oh and sorry to affect one cell in uh, in Iraq and make sure I grab the right one I'm trying to reduce the number of cells in the um, in that in the country there and uh, they're probably going to get recruited right back. Yep. <laughs> so, um, but really at this point, uh, my goal is if I can just disrupt enough to get my prestige up to at least, at least uh, medium, then I can start doing wars of ideas uh, in Iraq and at least get it to fair and then the game kind of changes from there or maybe even start working on Saudi Arabia. Um, again, just getting countries around me to fare. Fa having countries at fair is actually pretty darn good because uh, it takes down the odds by that the enemy can do anything by 17%, which is significant. Um, the, instead of a three or less, they're looking at rolling a two or less. It just makes it harder for them to accomplish anything that they're trying to do i mean having it at good governance is great but even if you have some countries around which are uh, sitting at fair that's not too bad actually um so we're going to try a war of ideas in indonesia and we by some miracle we get it and that is huge now we are in a position uh where we're getting close to uh to a, a win and very much a standard win in the um in the in a, a typical game of of uh of labyrinth um, i don't find myself many times in a regime change in iraq in uh in let's roll but uh, but at this uh at this juncture um i'm feeling pretty good overall um now it looks like there's uh, gonna be some some travel uh <laughs> there's as uh they're trying to get to uh iraq um to uh, again attempt the uh, the change of regime there to Islamist rule, uh, but now I'm thinking, geez, I'm actually in a pretty decent spot here. Uh, Fatah is a pain in the butt, but man, if I can, if I can uh, maybe maybe deploy a couple troops here, buy us some uh, some time, um, that might actually be a, a decent move because it makes it very hard. I was just counting the cells, so they're at ten. And I have seven troops there. So by adding two more troops over uh, from um, from Saudi Arabia makes it very tough now for uh, my enemy to uh, get the regime change they need. 
And uh, so I'm going to put uh, the backlash uh, op in reserve um, to pair with nation, UN nation building, and then they'll discard Fatah after that. Um, recruiting in Iraq again. Of course, it's automatic. Um, but now they don't quite have enough. And this is what I really should have dealt with ages ago. I've probably added a good half hour to the game as a result of my uh, sort of... Uh, uh, thinking there now anyway they uh, f are beginning to fly in from everywhere uh, right now so this is where it gets a bit sticky um, without the ability to just dis to disrupt there it is actually kind of in a a bit of a mess so um, my idea then was that I really did not have much uh, other choice I had to go all in on Iraq. I cannot let Iraq go. So I have all 15 troops in Iraq in order to prevent that sucker <laughs> from from going green. And uh, yeah, so even though um, the the bot still continues to recruit into Iraq, there's no way uh, with all 15 troops there. That's not a situation you see very commonly in this game, but um, there was no way I could let that happen. Um, so, really, it, it's it was uh, there was no other choice. <laughs> so, um, anyway, the, so there's uh, a bit of uh, of uh, testing there going on, but uh, we managed to to hold out. And uh, yeah, very. So right now. I'm actually in a decent spot. I did lose a, you know, uh, prestige there, uh, unfortunately, but I'm only two prestige away. I'm two disrupts away from medium prestige. And now I can really start uh, hammering Saudi Arabia and getting that up to uh, up to a good a good spot. Um, Sharia is played to replace the cell in Iraq. Nothing really there again that can be can be done. Um, we get another leak. Let's see if we can uh, if we can win. We win get the posture test. We lose a prestige. Unfortunately, we didn't get the luck that time. That would have been great to have a boost of whatever five or whatever, but uh, not uh, not today. So uh, we go into the election, and this is something I wanted to have figured out to see what was going on. Um, I usually like to play the election very early in my turn because I want to make sure I know where things sit before I do uh, do anything. I'm also scanning the discards for um, to use my oil spike and no mass turnout, no uh, Sistani, and uh, yeah, it's n kind of nothing that impressive there. So. Maybe in a, an instance where I use uh, oil price uh, spike for the oil boost and for the uh, uh, and also for the uh, uh, the ops. So, uh, yes, yeah, so the election ends up uh, going my way, giving me a boost in prestige. Um, I'm also eyeing the oil countries. Now I have Indonesia and I have Gulf states. So playing oil spike would get me to, uh, I believe that's 11, um, that's 11 resources. So I really only need one more. I get Saudi Arabia to, to fair, and I would love to have some sort of card that, I don't know, gives me um, a leg up in, uh, in the war of ideas. But there's really nothing at the moment. It's going to be a tough, uh, a bit of a tough go to, to get the. Um, uh, to get uh, to get Saudi Arabia to to good, it's basically going to be a six by my calculations. It would ha I would have to roll a six, and that's not especially good. Uh, you know, that's uh, long odds. You can play those odds for a while, and it'll feel like you're you're always rolling the wrong number. And I'm, sc I'm desperately scanning the discards for something. Let's roll is not bad. Um, you know, it's certainly uh, a bit helpful, but UN nation building is really, uh, 
sure. <laughs> it's that's okay too. There's nothing really compelling. I really just need something to boost my prestige, and uh, that would be uh, really all I would need. I was looking for kind of anything that would be um, helpful in that regard. Um, so I'm going to take the event, and uh, just for the safety of it, I'm going to take Let's Roll just in case. And I almost I actually surprised myself because my I forgot that uh, I had Turkey uh, under my uh, good governance. And even when I was doing the play-by-play -play just now, I realized that I had totally forgotten that I had Turkey under good governance. So I was one little spike away from a win. And uh, so anyway, pay attention to your, uh, to your uh, board state. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Um, it was a fun game to play, and I'm always happy to bring them to you. Thank you so much for watching. This is Legendary Tactics.